like to turn to is so Unity Biotech. So you are a founder of Unity Biotech, and they they recently result, released results for what is it, UBX one three two five, which was a senolytic for uh, the eye macular degeneration among others. Yeah. Uh, could you talk about that just uh, a little bit? Yes. So let me start though by saying Unity. This is their second trial. So the first mm. trial osteoarthritis, mm. and they considered that drug. Uh, to have been a failure in the sense that it was not efficacious. It wasn't dangerous, there was no toxicity, but it didn't seem to help very much. My personal feeling is that that trial um, was not thought through enough. The timing at which they tested was based on mouse data. And as I said, there's a 30 to 35 fold difference in lifespan between a mouse and a human. Um, mm -hmm. The eye results are much more promising. And um, so in the U.S., you know, we go through these phase one trials. That just means safety. You know, you have to do no toxicity. And now phase two, uh, you really begin to look for efficacy. But of course, even with phase one, you can ask, did anything get better? And even mm -hmm. in the one trials in the eye, it looked like things were getting better. The, the burden of, of disease in the eye was getting better. So it's very promising. It, it's actually I'm pretty optimistic. Right. So I looked at the mechanism um, of, the, of, of the drug, right? I mean, it, so it seems to be inhibiting a very generic protein. So w why is it specific to the eye? Would it work elsewhere, do you think? Uh, yes, I think it probably would work elsewhere. But actually, um, I have been privileged by having um, um, an eye surgeon do a sabbatical in my lab. So I'm learning all about the eye. And, you know, the eye is a very interesting um, part of the body. So you can apply things in the eye that do not get into the, re the bloodstream, for example. And the eye has um, these different areas, the back of the eye and the front of the eye, each of which develop age-related pathologies. And there is now mounting evidence that both the front of the eye and the back of the eye begin to lose function because of the presence of senescent cells. It's so accessible to give things to the eye. I mean, eye drops. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, one major age-related pathology is a condition called dry eye. So it's not like macular degeneration. It doesn't make you totally blunt. Definitely interferes with your eyesight though. And you know, there are eye drops that seem to work for dry eyes. So it's a very good uh, test uh, tissue for, for testing drugs and seeing if they're efficacious. Right, so, that, so it's easier to deliver UBX1325 to the eye and it, it stays there. So it, it doesn't impact elsewhere, but maybe at a later trial. Okay, no, okay, that makes sense. So um, as we kind of get towards the end, there, there's a couple of things. So, so actually that kind of leads me to my, my kind of final question. So what do you see as the future of aging? Um, I, and I think maybe we've talked about it a bit, it's basically extended health span. But um, what do you see as the most interesting technologies that are coming along and, and how do you see uh, I guess, aging changing over the next few years. Okay, so there are several interesting technologies. So Senolytics, we talked a lot about. Mm. There are other technologies that are being developed that I think are going to be um, really interesting and helpful to aging people. So one is uh, understanding stem cells better, understanding how you can take a cell and get it to rejuvenate a tissue as opposed to... Um, uh, just dying. So there are many labs now working on understanding stem cells and understanding whether or not you can tr either transplant them or even more exciting, turn a cell in your body into a stem cell that will then be able to rejuvenate a tissue. So this is why the Nobel Prize was given for developing what we call these Yamanaka factors, which can cause uh, 
somatic cells, normal non-stem cells to turn into stem cells with lots of potential to develop into different tissues. So that's very exciting. Mm. The other exciting area is building ex vivo in the laboratory um, organelles. That is um, small uh, groups of tissues that mimic normal tissue function, building them in the laboratory and then being able to implant them. So imagine if you had a kidney disease, a lab would be able to build a new kidney for you um, out of your cells. So you, if we're not talking about kidney transplant, it would be your cells, so no immune dysfunction. Build that little kidney, put it back in your body, and the kidney would grow. Now, it's getting there. Believe it or not, it's getting there for certain organs. And I think this is also very exciting technology. Right. Yeah, no, that that is like really exciting. I did that. Yes, I, I guess we talked a bit to Professor Church and he was. Oh, yeah. yeah, of course, yeah. He was. Yeah, we go to a very large group at Wake Forest, which is really, um, you know, doing amazing work at building these organ different types of organisms to replace tissue, building them in the laboratory and then being able to offer them uh, to people. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it would be very interesting if we could have people live longer and then hopefully they would, um, I don't know, care more about the earth as well. Oh, that's the other thing. So, I, I, you know, being in the Bay Area, this always comes up. Why do we want to have people living longer? There's too many people on earth. It's true. When I was in grade school, I learned that the population of the earth was 4 billion people. Now it's, I mean, 7 billion people. I mean, one lifetime, it's almost double. Can't go on. It, it absolutely cannot go on. So why? And the, the biggest reason I have, the two biggest reasons I have for that is, first of all, um, there's a huge drain on our economy as well as on our psyche in dealing with the problems of the world. If you have elderly parents, grandparents, you know what it's like, and it, it, it's awful. It, it, it's fiscally expensive, but it's also emotionally expensive. And to be able to alleviate that can only be good. Mm. Now you have elderly people that are productive parts of our society instead of bleeding, they're contributing. But the other way to think about it is, did you ever read the Tolkien trilogy? Yes. <laughs> Me too. I, mean, I was quite young, but there was a, a a race that really struck me. The Ents, mm -hmm. so they were these trees. They lived for thousands of years, and they knew that whatever happened to the earth, they were going to be alive, and they had to live with that. And so they cared about the earth a lot. And I think this would be very good for mankind to realize that we need to take care of the earth, not only for you, but for your children, your grandchildren, because right now the trajectory we're on is hell. It's absolutely hell, it cannot go on. And maybe this will be a benefit of not having to worry about your own debilitation, but being able to know that you're gonna be healthy and alive and watch your children and grandchildren face what's happening to the earth. Right. Yes. No, that, that, that is true. Um, and I think that's, that's a great note to end on. So, uh, Professor Gambisi, thank you so much for joining us today. So where can people find out about your latest research? They can go to the um, website of the Buck Institute. So just Buck Institute, Google it. And each lab has its own uh, website. And so people are welcome to go to my website as well as the website of my colleagues, all of whom are working on some aspect of aging. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. We will link to that in the, in the description. Thank you for, for what you're doing and kind of moving forward. I think, yes, it is so exciting in the aging area just now. Yeah. And thank you for being a vehicle to educate the public. I, I think this is so important and I, I'm, 
I, I really admire the fact that there are people like you who are making it possible for normal people to understand what's going on. Never mind these weird scientists, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much. And hopefully we, we'll get a chance to talk again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.